boogeyman is real. And you found him. My Haunting That Still Traumatizes Me by My Boy Named Troy. This all started when I was six or seven. My life had been surrounded by weird occurrences, but my childhood has never been explained. The day we picked up the keys for our new home, it was exciting and kind of nerve-wracking because of the whole new house, new school and such. The day we picked up the keys, we also met the previous owner, so Mum and Dad sent us off to play with the previous owner's kid, like a parent usually would do. As we were playing, we were also talking about our lives and what grade we were in, you know, the awkward small talk sort of stuff. I can't remember what brought it up, but I remember her saying my nan died in that house. She died of a heart attack that was kind of scary to a kid, but I wasn't ready for what that quite meant. The first night, the power wasn't turned on, so we ordered pizza and were eating in the dark with torches and candles. It was really fun. After eating, we asked to go play outside and play tag for a bit. My two sisters and I probably played for an hour or two just tiring ourselves out. We had an old shed that was falling apart on the property that we were told to stay out of because it was dangerous and there were possibly snakes. I didn't like rules, so I went in only to see rope hanging from the ceiling rafters. I ran back to my parents and said someone hung themselves. Dad said it's just a sheep shearing shed and that they would hang sheep to shear as a kid. That made sense, but as an adult I realized that he only said that not to scare my sisters and me. After that, we went to bed that night, and I had an awful dream where my family was killed and set on fire. I woke up in tears and ran to my parents' room. What I didn't know was these nightmares would happen after on a nightly basis, getting worse and worse as the days went on. A month had passed by now, and we had all settled in. That's when the energy in the house had changed, and Dad had become a very angry person and became very hostile towards mainly myself. So some nights to get away from the abuse, I would sit outside doing prayers to whoever was listening. I never got answers, but I would see movement coming from the old sheep shed. It would look like someone swinging, and that would scare me to go back inside. After a little while, school had started, so I had that to distract me from what was going on at home. After a long week of school, I was tired and went to sleep, skipping dinner that night. I heard my cupboard door slide open, and I saw this grayish skeletal figure step out and just stare at me from the cupboard. So with the nightmares and now this, I was obviously scared, but I knew whatever it was loved that, so I picked up the courage and yelled, you don't scare me. I still regret saying that to this day, because this thing climbed out of my cupboard, walked up my wall onto the ceiling above my bed and was screaming slurs and profanity talking about how it was going to kill my family and make me watch. That terrified me. Again, it loved it, because it would smile this massive, dark, toothless grin. I started to not get proper sleep because I was scared of the nightmares, and if I did sleep, I would sleep in one of my sister's rooms on the floor without them knowing, since getting hit and yelled at by them was more comforting than my room. I eventually got into a lot of trouble with my parents, I had to brave the nights as it got worse over time, realizing this thing could touch me. It would pin me down on my bed, screaming, You should kill yourself, and here, I'll make it easy. My dad's hunting knife would be sitting at the end of my bed, nicely placed. And I knew what it wanted me to do, but I wouldn't, and that made it really mad. Weeks had passed, and nothing had changed. The holidays were coming up, so we planned to go away, and my mom had to get a co-worker to look after the dogs and the cat. After we got back from our lovely holiday, we found out the co-worker had left because something dark had chased her. She said the house was evil. Unfortunately, our cat somehow got locked in my room, leading him to pee on the floor. We ended up having to pull up the entire floor. That same week, we found a small bird injured, so we decided to nurse it back to health, and it stayed in my room since it was just concrete flooring, because we hadn't replaced the floor yet. I can't remember why we went to the shops, but when we got back, my fan was off, my window was shut, and the bird was dead at the bottom of the cage, with my room feeling like a sauna. 
I said to my parents, the man in my cupboard killed the bird. They said, you probably forgot and did it yourself. Dad and I had a massive fight that night, leading to my biggest bashing. My head was spinning as I laid on the floor, and I cried and asked for death. A couple of days later, I had my first ever seizure and remembered seeing a lady all in black, only finding out recently my heart had actually stopped and my mom had to thump my chest to get it started again. After that, I started seeing people I now know are spirits. It scared me at first, but then I got comfortable with it. After a while, the lack of sleep and abuse from Dad, I started having twisted dreams and thoughts of stabbing him in his sleep. Years passed, and we finally moved out. I was excited to leave that old life behind, but after a while I started talking about the old house in detail with the family, only to find out that they had their own stories. Mom had once been chased down the hallway by the same thing that traumatized me. My oldest sister would rather wait up all night till sunrise because at night she would see something standing in the hallway, feeling like it was going to attack her. Hearing their stories gave me a sense of relief knowing what I had experienced was real, but that scared me even more. It's been nine years since that house. It still scares me, but if it wasn't for that, I would never have learned about demonology and the not-so-kind spirits. I understand anyone reading this going, this all sounds made up. I wish it was, but hopefully this reaches the right people. I just want to say... You will make it out of your nightmare situations. Just stay strong. The Guys in Robes, submitted by Andy K. I never shared this story with anyone, and seeing as how the person who shared it with me is no longer alive, sadly, I figured what the hell. I found your channel last week, and I like it. It's pretty good. Oh, here goes my story. I grew up with my friend Will since we were four. Our moms were friends, so therefore we were too. I mean, we were inseparable, although we had very different interests in a lot of ways. But still, we always hung out, got into trouble, went to each other's games, double-dated with our girlfriends, and we were both in each other's weddings. What happened on this night, though, is something that went down when we were in ninth grade. It was a Friday night and Will was going to stay over at my house. My parents were going out, so we figured we could sneak a couple of beers in the garage and then have a cigar. Yeah, ninth grade and smoking cigars. Morons. It was about seven in the evening when my parents took off, and we were just shooting some hoops in my driveway and having a couple of cold Jenny lights. And this happened in a town outside of Rochester, New York, by the way. It was late September, and a few weeks before this night... A teenage kid around our age killed a girl and her baby in the elementary school parking lot. And that's a true story. If anyone wants to look it up, just search for Palmyra, New York. Palmyra is also where Joseph Smith started the Mormons, but this kid was said to have killed the two under satanic circumstances. I remember there was a meeting at our school about it, and everyone in the area was really freaked out about it. Anyone from the late 80s and early 90s should remember the whole everything is satanic movement. But, as far as I was concerned, the kid was just crazy. But the satanism thing stuck, and I was interested in the occult like any normal person. So, Will and I were starting to feel that warm tingle from the beer and decided it would be a smart move to take a couple more and head down to the schoolyard where the murders happened and kind of just look around. I got a backpack and put some Jennies in there, grabbed two flashlights in our Swisher Sweets, and off we went, staying in the shadows of the fall night. It took us a little while to walk to the school, and we wanted to sneak in and not just walk right in under the main lights. And that would be a sure way to have someone see us and call the cops. On the way there, we were being morbid dorks talking about maybe we would find something gross from the murders, or some real evidence of satanic cult action. Yep. Young, dumb, and totally disrespectful. We got to the school and I remember saying, I don't even know where it happened. I mean, how can we find anything? Will just said, we'll look around, and then he opened a beer. We lit our cigars and walked around the school building looking for God knows what. I mean, actually nothing. 
and we sat down after a while and were just talking about these two girls we liked. The hunt for gore and Satan took a back seat to the ladies. I was starting to get pretty buzzed after another two beers, and we both started to laugh at everything we were saying. I remember laughing so hard at one point that Will said to stop because he was going to throw up as he couldn't stop laughing. Then I looked up into some trees a little ways away from where we were, as we were leaning against the school. I saw what looked like two guys standing in church robes. Now, this wasn't like a forest. There were houses right behind the trees. At first I thought it was someone trying to scare us away as a joke, and I just burst out laughing again. Will said to shut up, and then looked over, saw them, and he froze. The guy's got an axe, was all he said, and was scrambling to get up. Before I could do anything, Will started running for the street, and I yelled, hey, wait up. I tripped over my stupid backpack, and as I was getting up, the two robed figures were walking towards me. I grabbed my bag, got up, and ran after Will. He was waiting at the street. We looked back to see the two figures standing right outside a parking lot light. We were scared as hell, even if it was someone just playing a prank. I said we needed to leave, and we started walking down the street really fast. We were in the village, and everything was pretty much closed up for the night. But we had to walk a ways home and go over Erie Canal to get back to my house. As we were walking fast, I got a weird feeling that we were being watched as other cars went by, but when I turned, I saw a car slowly moving behind us. There were no other cars behind whoever that was, so they were taking their time. I mentioned it to Will, he looked back, and we kept moving faster now, freaking out a bit more. It was dark, this car was tailing us, and it was creepy. I thought maybe it wasn't who we saw at the school, but Will said, man, it has to be. We got to a bridge at the canal, and as we were crossing, the car sped up and got right behind us and hit their brights. I yelled and ran as fast as I could until we got to the other side, and then I jumped into the ditch, pulling Will with me. The car came up along us and the window rolled down, and all I could see was the bottom half of a face. It was a guy in robes. In a really deep voice, he said, Go home and don't wander around at night. Halloween is coming. You might be next to die. Or something like that. I can't really remember it word for word. But I do remember all he had to say was we'd be dead. That I'm sure, he said. The car moved off and we finally got the nerve to get up and run back to my house. We ran up the driveway and sat down in my garage looking at the road. We still had some beer in my bag, and we drank them whispering over and over about what we had just seen. Every once in a while, a car would go by, and we'd freak out. Finally, we went inside. Will said we should just watch some TV and forget about everything. It was just a couple of guys messing around trying to scare us. (laughs) Well, they did. I was scared. I kept looking out the front window, and finally, around midnight, I saw what I was looking for. At the edge of my yard, a car was parked, and two guys in their robes were standing there. One held up an arm and pointed it at me as I looked out the window. Then they got back in their car and drove off. I ran to the phone, but Will pointed out that we had had some beers and we should just let it go unless they came back. We shut all the lights in the house off and went to my room and just started talking again. Then came a tap at my window on the second floor, like someone throwing a pebble at it. Whoever it was, I mean, how'd they know we were in there? All the lights were off. But these pebbles kept hitting the window until I went over, opened the window, and yelled to get the hell away from us. I heard some laughter and looked down. There was a guy in robes. But he wasn't alone, and I looked up and saw three more standing at a car at the road. Come on down, kid, he said. I'll make it quick. Quicker than the last kid. (laughs) That was it. I slammed the window, ran to our hallway phone, and called the cops. They came out just as my parents were coming home, and we told everyone everything. No one believed us. They said it was our imagination. 
Thank God the beer had left our systems. But again, we were told to just knock it off and go to bed. Will and I stayed up all night talking about this, but no one came back and we never saw those guys in robes again. I still don't know if it was just some dudes messing around or something more sinister. Either way, that really happened in a town known for creepy stuff happening. Thanks for listening, gang. If you have a true scary story of any nature you'd like to hear narrated on my channel, email UncleJoshTrueScaryStories at gmail.com. I read them all. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment below. I'll get back to you as quick as I can. And follow me on social media. All the links to that are in the description below. Everyone, be excellent to each other. And until next time, remember... Be wary of things that go bump in the night. Could be anything. A ghost, a monster, or the guy next door. Shay? Are you still doing that hand thing? I heard you're doing the hand thing today. God, what is that? Ah, hood, ah, hood, ah, hood. Shay, what is it? Ah. You've been doing this for 24-7. See, so you've been doing the hand thing all day, or you were. Jordan told me you had been doing it on a sleeping bag earlier. Shay, are you still doing that hand thing? <laughs>